for the people that listen to this podcast, but also myself, there is a um, very lively interest in sort of natural resources and how it shapes geopolitics. And it's plain as day for anyone to look at how renewables does that, how our oil does that, or even how water does that to an extent. But sand, um, as you, I think, uh, justifiably assert, uh, because I was skeptical when I first heard it, but sand may well uh, and truly be the most important solid substance on earth. Uh, which is wild. So you did tease it a little bit uh, before then, uh, but could you explain why sand is the most important solid substance on earth? Sure. Um, mainly, like I said, because it's, it's the raw material that our cities are made out of, right? If you look around you right now, and same goes for your listeners, wherever you are, guaranteed the floor be beneath you, the ceiling over your head, the walls around you, excellent chance they're made out of concrete. Right, just like every modern building that's built anywhere in the world today, from you know, from South Africa to Mongolia, is made with concrete. Every shopping mall, every apartment block, every you know, every uh, office tower, made with the same stuff. And what is concrete? Well, it's really mostly just sand and gravel that have been glued together with cement. Mm -hmm. So every building that you're looking at is really thousands of tons of sand that's just been stuck together to form a solid. And it doesn't end there, right? So we have sand that makes up all the buildings. Sand also makes up the roads that connect all those buildings, right? They're also made out of concrete or asphalt, which is similarly just sand that's been glued together. The windows, every single window in every one of those buildings, as well as the windows on your car and the glass in your eyeglasses is also made of sand. Glass is just melted down sand. Every piece of glass everywhere in the world, sand. Sand makes the silicon chips that power our, uh, our computers and our cell phones that make it possible for us to have this conversation right now. The, the fiber optic cables that carry much of the internet traffic that this conversation is probably going over right now, also made from sand. So in a nutshell, no sand, no modern civilization. And the crazy thing is we are starting to run out. Yes, that is that's very uh, well teased a bit of foreshadowing for what we'll definitely be getting to. Um, but just to raise the stakes a little bit on what you just said, because even if I just take that at face value and say, yeah, there's a lot of concrete around, there's a lot of roads around, there's a lot of glass around, but hey, I've been to the Sahara Desert, I go to the beach and things look pretty hunky-dory to me because isn't the entire ocean bed um, a, a, just a giant, giant tonnage of sand? And I think if that was the case, that really we could just pick up any sand from anywhere and turn it into the products that we use, then it might not be so important to worry about. But um, you document the sort of grade, the gradation of sand. And this is really, really important to take into account because you, you can't just take any old sand for concrete, which is the lowest grade, but then imagine once you're getting to a microchip, imagine the type of gradage of sand you need to get. Could you explain the different gradations of sand? Sure. So, I mean, sort of sort of back up a little bit to where, where you started from. It's true. Of course, there's a lot of sand on the earth. In fact, it's, it's the most abundant thing on the planet uh, is quartz sand, which is the sand that we're most concerned about here. There's a whole lot of it out there, but not all of it works for our purposes. So first of all, all that sand in deserts is basically useless to us. And the reason is the grains of desert sand are shaped differently from the grains of sand that you find at the bottom of rivers or on beaches or on lakes. Desert sand has been eroded by wind over thousands and millions of years, and that's given it a more rounded shape. It's almost like little spheres, whereas sand that's been eroded by water, the stuff that you find, like I say, in lake beds or river beds or in beaches, it's got a more angular shape, more corners and edges to it. So that stuff, that water eroded sand locks together to form a, a solid structure, concrete, mm -hmm. which is the number one thing that we use sand for by far is concrete. Whereas desert sand, because it's so round, it just doesn't hold together. It's like the difference between trying to build something out of a, a stack of millions of little marbles as opposed to a stack of millions of little bricks. Mm -hmm. So all that desert sand taken off the table. Mm. So the other sand, yeah, there is a lot of it, but what you have to understand is we use more of it than any other natural resource on earth except water. 
We use 50 billion tons of gravel and sand, sand and gravel every single year, which mm -hmm. is enough to cover the entire state of California. All right, so when you're talking about quantities that big, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of it, but eventually you're gonna start to run into limits. So as you said, so the, 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 the number one thing that we use sand for is concrete. And for that, you can use the, the sand that makes concrete can be found pretty much in every country in the world, but it is starting to get tapped out in a lot of locations. People are using it up. And basically our other, most of our other things that we use sand for, the sort of purity level, the amount of the quartz purity of the sand uh, determines what you can use it for. So concrete you can make with, you know, like I say, sand that's found everywhere in the world. Glass, for, to make glass, you need uh, sand that has a much higher uh, level of purity. That's much more pure quartz. And that you can find in a lot of places, but far fewer. When you get to the sand that we use to make things like solar panels and microchips, that sand needs to be incredibly pure to begin with. And there's a very few, only a very few places in the world where that comes from. And in fact, Spruce Pine, North Carolina, which is this little town in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina, is the source of the purest quartz sand that's ever been found anywhere on earth. And that sand is used in the manufacturing of pretty much every single computer chip in the world.